Hello, um, today I've got, well, normally on this channel we only deal with UK legal uh, slip joints or UK friendly slip joints. This one is a very much questionable, marginable UK legal carry. The blade is slightly over the three inch mark if you take it to there, but if you take the cutting edge of the blade it's under the three inch mark. Take that as you will. Um, the fact that you can't actually buy one of these anymore um, means it's probably largely academic anyway. Plus, this is a, a sailor's knife, so you would only really carry a knife like this. It's far too big, far too heavy to carry for any other reason unless you wanted a sailor's knife and you needed a flat pointed or flat non pointed blade and a marlin spike for doing uh, rigging work. You wouldn't, you wouldn't carry a, a rigging knife. Um, it's just it's way too heavy, way too big. I mean, to give you some idea of size, I have here a, a Dynox, um Swiss Army knife. This is the, if I could turn it over, the 91 millimeter sized standard climber, and it obviously is absolutely dwarfed by the uh, rigging knife or what's known the British Navy is known as pusser and everything that comes from pusser is pusser's this or pusser's that pusser's rum for example but this is pusser's dirk um, I bought this when I was eight years old I just passed my um, day boat Royal Yachting Association day boat skipper certificate so I could take I was allowed to take a boat out on my own so I bought this with my birthday money. Um, I went up to the stores. My father was um, a rating in the Royal Naval Reserve at the time. So I turned up uh, one night with him. We went to this when the stores was open and I purchased it and it came in a bit of brown grease proof paper. And it, oh, I also got a, a, a pristine white rope lanyard with two um, Turks heads in it. Uh, one sliding Turk's head and one fixed so I had a small loop at the end that went through the bale on here and the other could go well when we're when wearing the lanyard as part of the dress uniform the Navy I think still does it goes around your neck personally I wouldn't put a lanyard around my neck just in case I strangled myself but you could put it through the loop of your trousers or around your belt or whatever depending on how secure you wanted to make it um, but it meant that if you um, went in, which is quite common in um, dinghy sailing, um, you know, the, the term being to, you pissed in, if you pissed in and you, you, you might lose things like this, so it was always tied on so that you made sure that you didn't. But anyway, um, I bought it, it's been a regular use ever since, um, it lives in my toolbox, it's my sort of, I don't sail anymore, um, I did spend a time in the Naval Reserve as a sub-lieutenant and I carried it then, but they had stopped being issued by then. They were issued between about 1939 and I think about 84 or thereabouts. So, um, uh, Paddy Potato Peelers will undoubtedly have had one of these well when he served, whether he still has it or not, I don't know. Maybe I've had to hand it back in. But I owned mine, so I didn't have to hand it in. Um, I used to have another one because uh, I had my father's, but I don't know what's happened to it. Um, Anyway, it's, it's a good solid knife. It's all made of steel, all made of stainless steel. Even the handle seems to be made of some sort of stainless steel. I was imagining it was aluminium, but it's magnetic. So, um, But it has a sort of matte grey finish to it. The um, There's no markings on it to tell you what the steel is. The only markings on it are the word mice and, and the number 21306. Um, Meissen is the maker. There were many makers of these. But the 21306 is the pattern. So if you did a Google search on um, 21306 knife or something like that, you'll find um, references to these knives. I don't think they're of any particular value because an awful lot of them were issued. But um, it has a bit to put your name on there, which has my name engraved on it. My mother worked in an um, electronics factory that did engraving back in the 70s. So she took it to work and... Got my name engraved on it. It has uh, this end under the bale. It's got a 
uh, screwdriver and it has this marlin spike which I'll just open um, which is used for a number of things. You use it for splicing rope to split the strands of the rope but you can also use it to open and tighten uh, shackles, use shackles. It gives you that uh, degree of leverage. Um, so it's, it's a useful thing about a boat. Um, it's, there's very little spring on that, but you know, it's not going to close on your fingers and even if it does, it's not going to cut you. The worst it's going to do is just give you a, a wee nip between because it's, it's uh, round across, rounding section. The blade itself is um, classic sheep's foot blade really. They don't like stabby knives on um, ships. There was always, I suppose, the uh, the idea that um, uh, men in close quarters for a long period of time might fight, and having stabby knives might cause issues. You could slash somebody with it, I suppose, but um, that's less of a, less of an issue. It takes and holds a reasonably good edge. Doesn't hold it for too long because it's I think it's a relatively soft steel. I don't know what it is, but it's reasonably stainless considering this knife has been doused in seawater and then left to sit like that for a relatively long periods of time. Um, actually, I think it's done remarkably well. Plus, it's been sitting in my drawer in my shed for some time. Anyway, I still use it. It lives. It lives, it lives in my work drawer in my um, in my tool in, in my toolbox, and it is the. Pusser's Dirk circa 1974-ish. So, thank you for looking in. Goodbye.